Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. It's now the second week of August. I have come back from a two week holiday to some glorious weather. It's going to be as much as 26 degrees Celsius in Peebles for the next couple of days, which is really unheard of for around here. And it's always interesting coming back after a holiday to see what the flower patches are looking like. And this is the first time that I have ever completely left the outside flower patches to their own devices. Normally when I go away, my mum and dad come around, they deadhead flowers, they water for me and generally look after things so that when I get back, I'm all ready to go again. But this time mum and dad were on holiday with me in the Orkney Islands. So I decided it was a bit much to ask somebody to look after the whole of my acre plot for me. So um, I've just left it be. And that's been a really interesting experiment to see what exactly has happened to the flower patch with no looking after it during a really dry spell. So while I was on holiday, I had emptied out most of the greenhouse before I went and just had a few biennial seedlings in there. So my great neighbour, Kirsty, she came around and looked after those for me. And her son cut the grass as well as another family friend's son as well. So that kept all the lawn going and that's really good. So that means when we come back, Robert doesn't have to tackle really large amounts of grass and trying to get it back under control again. It normally needs a good cut um, once to twice a week to just keep it under control and looking nice. Although I can see that it has been dry while we've been away because there's quite a lot of brown patches on the lawn so I don't think we've had a great deal of rainfall. Looking at the flower patch it looks like a lot of things have just kind of stagnated not much growing has gone on which makes me think it's been dry um, and not too many flowers come out either I thought it might be coming back to a lot of dahlias a lot of cosmos and things but they haven't really got going and I think the lack of water might have been the problem there. So that was the first thing I did as soon as I got home was to get the flower patches well watered and with this heat that we're having at the moment I've been keeping that going every evening and early in the morning as well and hopefully everything will start to come back. Um, the dahlias did need a bit of attention and um, we did have some flowers but you'll see um, when we go down and have a look at them that they were getting nibbled and I think the earwigs had been at them while I've been away. I think it's been so dry that we haven't had much in the way of slugs um, causing problems. They tend to be worse here when we've had lots of cold damp wet weather. So let's start off today by going around the flower patch, seeing how things look, what is still flowering well, what's still to come and what can I do to rejuvenate it how can I get it back because we've still got quite a few weeks of the season left to go I don't know when our first frost will be this year could be September it could be October it could even be as late as November so we want to keep these flowers going if we possibly can let's go and have a look so there's not huge amounts of flowers in the flower patches as while I was away I did have a bride come in and she was cutting some buckets of flowers for her wedding so she will have taken quite a few of the flowers that are in the flower patch but we do have some sunflowers that are out these are just nice to enjoy in the garden and to look at because they're far too fully out for me to cut for any floristry now but we've got lots more coming and I've got lots of succession sowings of sunflowers so there'll be more throughout August and September Cornflowers always need a really good cut back once you have been away on holiday because they do go over really quickly. But if you manage to cut them back before they've gone to seed, then you'll get lots of new flower stems coming. So if you've got cornflowers in your garden and they start to get to this stage over here, you can see this one here, that's finished. So that just needs snipped off there. So lots of tidying up needed done on these cornflowers and you can clearly see that there's some lovely flowers still in bloom but there's lots of faded flower heads as well. So the first job is to go in and snip off those faded blooms there and because there's quite a few and it's quite difficult to look further down the stem I'm going to cut off the flower heads first and then I'm going to look further down the stem to see if I can make a cut down there to encourage longer stems with new blooms to come back again. So this is a good example here. This cornflower is a finished flowering and it needs to be snipped off. And if you deadhead cornflowers like these that are finished flowering, then you'll get more coming from below. So it's quite an important job to keep on top of. And if you grow cornflowers and grow a lot of them, it can seem quite a tedious job because it seems never ending. Every single day you come out, there's more cornflowers that will have gone over. But it definitely rewards you if you do do this job because then you will get lots more cornflowers coming through for the whole season. So these have been going for me since the end of May and now we're in August and I'm still getting cornflowers so deadheading is a really important job. I know that lots of flower growers find cornflowers 
really quite tricky, not because they're difficult to grow, but because once they are growing and flowering, they're quite difficult to cut. They get entangled in the horizontal support netting and it's really quite difficult to harvest them quickly and easily. But what I love about cornflowers, above all other flowers that I grow in the garden, is that they just keep giving and giving even longer than the sweet peas and the corn cockles and other hardy annuals that I have. The cornflowers have been going here since May and now we're in August, so that's a good few months and they will keep going for quite a few weeks more. So the stems might be shorter, you might be getting less of the flowers, but they're still beautiful to enjoy. And as a flower grower, you can still use them for jam jar posies and buttonholes. So absolutely gorgeous and really well worth growing. And they look really nice in a wild flower meadow as well. So if you want to grow them in the border, that's great. But also if you just want a wildflower area in your garden, that looks really pretty. Or you can grow the dwarf varieties in pots as well. So everything needs a deadhead in the garden. These cosmos I have deadheaded and I'll show you a clip just now of what they look like when I came back. So some lovely Abricotta Cosmos blooming here and you can see some that have finished flowering there so they need to be deadheaded so that you can get more Cosmos flowers coming through. If we were just to leave these finished flowers they would set seed and that would stop new flowers from being produced. There are some more that are just going over there. So they all need a good trim back to encourage new blooms to come through over the next few weeks and Cosmos will keep going now for me until the first frost hopefully. I've given the flower patches a really good water every day since I came back from holiday because it has been really dry and they would have really suffered for that. But for some reason this year, the cosmos is not growing well. Last year, it was about double the height of this with a lot more flowers. And speaking to other gardeners and flower growers, their cosmos is not doing very well this year either. I don't know whether it's because we had a really cool dry June and that just didn't suit them, but the cosmos is definitely significantly smaller, shorter and with less flowers than a year ago. There may be less cosmos flowering this year and they may be a lot shorter than normal but I really do love this new variety which is apricotta and I'm definitely going to grow this again next year. So this is my cosmos xanthos. I have gone and deadheaded this as well so I'll get it coming back again. So I'll show you a clip of that just now. So coming back from holiday after two weeks my cosmos xanthos looks like this with a lot of flowers that have finished and need to be deadheaded. So that is a good job to do just now. Clear it all up, tidy it up, deadhead it and then we should get lots of lovely new blooms coming through. And the Cosmos Xanthos, like my Apricotta Cosmos, is just really short this year. I had it much taller last year. So again, I'm thinking dry winds in June. I'm thinking lack of moisture in the soil despite watering. Um, and also just the last couple of weeks where it has not had the watering from me as an addition, then that has really slowed. It's just not grown as much as I would have thought. So plan is to do deadheading regularly and to give it lots of watering to see if we can get it going for the last part of the season. One flower that just really doesn't seem to mind the dry conditions and the fact that I've neglected it for two weeks is Dorcas. It is still flowering really well. So some of it has finished in the top flower patch, but I have got spring sown ones coming through down here in the bottom flower patch. And these are never quite as big stems or as tall or sturdy, but they produce still some beautiful flowers for using in arrangements. So it's well worth doing some succession sowing. So sow some docus seeds in the autumn, but also sow some in the springtime so that you have got flowers at this end of the growing season as well. One of my favourite flowers at this time of year is the Helichrysum and they've come out while I have been away. And these are flowers that will keep going right through to the frost. So the first ones might be on October. So we've got August, September, October of these beautiful flowers. But again, like the Cosmos, the Helichrysum are definitely behind. They're not as tall, they are not as prolific. And again, I think it must just have been down to the weather that we got earlier on in the summer. Not as much moisture as they needed at that crucial growing stage in June. So we'll have to have a try again next year and see if it is going to be really dry that I up my watering I think at that crucial early stage in May June when they're really putting down roots and they're putting on lots of green growth. I think that is the crucial stage for getting bigger plants later on. 
So lots more watering needed next year. Some snapdragons have been flowering away while I've been on holiday. These all need cut back soon so that we can hopefully get a further flush of flowers. You can probably see the grass in the background as well. It's looking quite um, bare and patches quite dry. So we've definitely not had a lot of rainfall while I've been away. Since going away, my first scabious has come out. Um, we've got a few different colors coming out now. We've got reds, blacks, whites, and I really love scabious. It's one of my favorite late summer flowers to grow. Really easy to grow from seed if you want to have a go. So here we are down at one of the dahlia patches and this is what it's looking like after being left for two weeks. And to begin with it looks like it's okay from a distance, lots of flowers, lots of buds, but when you look a little bit closer you can start to see that a lot of the dahlias have been nibbled. And I'm very sure it's probably earwigs, there you go, you can see one there that's been well nibbled. Which is a right shame because they are beautiful flowers and um, they can be ruined and not able to be used in floristry at all if they have had a bit of a nibble around the edges. So you can see here as well that some dahlias are finished flowering. There's one there that needs to be cut back because you don't want it to set seed. And here's another nibbled one here that needs to be cut back so that we can get some fresh flowers coming through where the buds and the flowers aren't nibbled because we can protect them. You want to make sure that you're cutting your dahlias back quite low down on the stem. You don't want to just deadhead the flower. You want to cut right back into the plant so that you'll get nice, long, strong stems coming up with your new flowers on them. Again here you can just see they've had a nice little nibble on some of the edges of the petals and it would have been the most beautiful dahlia if it hadn't got nibbled. So I do find this the most frustrating part of growing dahlias. So this would have been a very nice pink dahlia if it hadn't been nibbled. And I know it's earwigs because of the slugs probably haven't been out as much this year because of the dry weather and because I hadn't been watering, I think that it has probably kept the slugs away. But the earwigs, I think, have probably had a very happy time for the last couple of weeks. Normally I have pots, I collect them up in straw, but because I was away, I haven't been doing that. And I also didn't have any protection over the dahlia buds, so it was a free-for-all and I think the majority have gotten eaten. So at this stage, I have to cut the dahlias back and then I'll get new ones in a few weeks' time. So it does look drastic. It looks like I've taken all my dahlia flowers out and now I haven't got any left. And yes, it was a drastic thing to do, but I know from doing this that I now have cleared the patch of the nibbled flowers and that if I'm patient two weeks time, I should have lots of lovely new blooms coming through, which will look much better because they'll be protected. I'll have been on top of the earwigs and slugs and anything that's nibbling them. And that means that I should get some perfect flowers coming out. And with the good water and feed as well they'll be healthier as well because they've been just trying to grow away in dry soil for the last couple of weeks which plants just don't like. So what I've been doing today is I've been cutting back the nibbled dahlias and I have been putting organza bags on the top of the buds that are coming through and this is a really good trick as well for helping to keep out those earwigs. So they have drawstring bottom to them, you can buy them online in lots of stores, there are just organza gift bags that are usually used for putting in gifts to send as presents um, but they work really well for this as well and they work on roses, chrysanthemums, anything that are precious big flowers that you might want to protect but they're a nice material because they won't let the earwigs through but they will let rain water through and light so they're perfect so they are big enough that they will fit over the bud without um, touching it and there is room for the bud to open up and grow into the flower inside and then when you're ready to harvest you can just remove the bag easily over the top nice and gently without breaking any of the flower petals so in about Another week, two weeks time, we should hopefully have a new batch of dahlias coming through and they'll be protected this time from the earwig pots that I will now put on again and also from these organza bags. If you want to find out more about my trick for collecting the earwigs up in the pots with straw, then I have a video on this and I'll leave a link at the end of this video for that so you can have a look at something that might help you in your own gardens. I knew going away for two weeks would mean that the sweet peas were likely to be over when I came back because you really do need to be watering them. They're thirsty plants. They like to have a feed as well of some tomato food once a week. They need good watering and they need deadheading all the time so that they don't go to seed like this. Because as soon as they've gone to seed, then they'll stop producing flowers. 
So we've got some flowers on here. I might deadhead as many as I can and just see if we can get a few more coming through for the next few weeks. They'll be on short stems, so can't use them in bouquets, but they might be enough for some nice jam jar posies because you still get that lovely scent off of them. So let's see if we can just keep them going for a few weeks longer. So it does look a bit brutal. I have gone round and deadheaded every sweet pea that I can see on the sweet pea frame here. I'm going to give it a good water and I'm going to go and give it a feed as well. And we'll see if we can get any sweet peas back. It might just be too late. I might have just missed my opportunity with getting the seed pods off being away. But I'm taking the risk just to see if we can get a few more fresh ones coming through in the next couple of weeks. So we'll come back and have a look at this in another week's time and see if we've got any sweet peas coming back. So this is some of what I have been taking off the sweet pea plant. So this is the sweet pea pod starting to form now that it's finished flowering. So if you're deadheading your sweet peas, this is what you're trying to prevent happening. You're trying to prevent the plant from going and setting seed. So remove these when you see them and you'll keep getting flowers for longer. So my corn cockles have definitely finished flowering while I've been away on holiday and no amount of cutting these back will get these to come again now. They are starting to put on their seed pods containing the seeds and they'll mature up over the next few weeks and then I'll be able to collect the seeds. So if we have a look at them closely, this is a corn cockle here and it's just starting to form a seed pod where there was a flower before but it's not open yet so you can't collect the seeds, it's not mature enough so we'll just leave that on the plant for a little while longer and if we have a look over here you can start to see one that's opening up and you can just see the black in the middle which is the seeds there so I will be able to start collecting those you want to collect them at this stage before they open too much and the seed spills on the ground so that's a perfect stage to be collecting them at and there's another one there these two here have opened up nicely so I can collect the seeds but these ones here have a little bit more maturing to go and it's nice to collect your own seeds um, because they're really good at germinating, they're lovely and fresh and it's nice to know that you've collected seeds from your own garden that'll go on to produce new flowers for you the following year. And I've got a video as well from last year that I did on collecting seed and now that we are coming to the end of the summer and some of your annuals will be finishing off, that might be worth a watch just to see how you can collect seed from some of the different flowers that I grow. This is a flower that's done really well with a bit of neglect for the last two weeks and that is Rebecca Cherry Brandy. So it has come out and it's looking absolutely gorgeous. I really like this colour of Rebecca and it's quite prolific this year. This is actually a plant that I grew last year and sometimes Rebecca will get through the winter and sometimes it won't. But this one has and it's flowering away really nicely now. Another drought tolerant flower by the looks of it are these everlasting flowers which are absolutely gorgeous. So those were the ones that I direct sowed from seed back in June and are flowering away now and are great for drying as well. And I'll leave the names of some of the flowers that I've been looking at today in the description so that you know what I've been growing. So coming back from holiday, the top flower patch is looking a bit of a wilderness. A lot of perennials grow up here and they have finished flowering. So I'm having to do a lot of cutting back there and hopefully getting a second flush of some of them. But there are new things coming through as well. So before I went on holiday, I sowed some seeds in a bed and Cecilia was one of the things. We've got some borage and that has come through really nicely. I can see lots of nice foliage on the Cecilia and that will start flowering for me, I would think, at the end of August beginning of September. So that's a good one to succession so directly. Um, we've got some asters coming through as well. I really love these in September, October time. They're one of the last flowers of my season. Before I went away as well, I did some succession sowing of some more sunflowers. So these ones are a few weeks behind the ones that are flowering now in the front garden. And these will give me some nice flowers in September as well. And in the top flower patch, my larkspur has flowered. It has been a little disappointing this year because I grew large volumes of larkspur and didn't get a huge number of flowers. So I'm going to read up on that over the next couple of months and see if I can improve my larkspur for next year because it's a great flower to grow. It's great for drying and I also use it for confetti. So here is my big pile of cuttings that I have taken from my flowers that I've finished. So I've been cutting back feverfew, cutting back the mallow, cutting back the astrantia, any hesperus that looks like it needs cut back. 
here's the Estrantia, now it's cut back, so that's looking good, it's got nice green glossy foliage on it and it may well produce a second flush of flowers for me. So all of the parts of the plant that I have cut back, I will then chop into smaller bits here so that I can put it on the compost heap. If I just put it on the compost heap like it is just now, then it wouldn't break down very quickly or easily at all and you wouldn't be getting compost that quickly. And I like to have compost within about eight months of making it from scratch. So I need to break it down into small pieces just now. So I hope you've enjoyed looking around the flower patches with me today and seeing what I'm trying to do to get them going again after having had a two week summer break. And there's definitely lots of deadheading to do. There is lots and lots of cutting back right to the base with some plants. There is lots of watering needing done, some feeding of things like my sweet peas to see if they'll come back. And there is lots of protecting of flowers such as my dahlias to make sure that we get some that are in perfect condition so that florists can use them and go in my bouquets and not be nibbled. So let's keep our fingers crossed and see if we can get some flowers coming back for the next couple of months up to the end of the growing season in October. And things are looking like they're going to change a little bit for me next year. Next week is going to be the last week of arranging wedding flowers for the next wee while. And I've been doing it for the last six years and I've absolutely loved it. It was never something that I intended to do when I started growing flowers. It's just something that naturally evolved and I got involved in and I taught myself how to arrange wedding flowers and how to grow them. It was very, very exciting. It was a creative side of myself that I hadn't discovered before. I've met some wonderful people, worked with some great people at some great venues and I've also met some wonderful couples as well who want local seasonally grown environmentally friendly flowers for their big day. But although it's going to be sad to leave that side of my business, I am looking forward to moving on. Um, doing the wedding flowers is fantastic, but it involves a huge amount of work and you're relying on these particular blooms flowering at the exact period of time that you want them to come out. And that can be really difficult, especially in an unpredictable climate that we have here in Scotland, where we can get very different springs from one season to another very different summers, very different autumns. So from the point of view of that side of stress, I'm looking forward to leaving it behind. But the biggest thing, the biggest reason behind why I wanted to change what I was doing is family time. So for the last few years, I have been doing a lot of weddings at weekends. They take up a lot of evenings beforehand with all the prep and during the day. And I was just feeling that pull where I'm working and I am also trying to be a mum and I didn't feel like I was doing the best of both so I wanted to be able to see a bit more of my family. My family is growing up really fast, I have three girls and um, Erin is going into primary six so she's just got another two years primary school and is going into third year at high school and Kirsten only has two years left at high school and then she'll be leaving home. So I just wanted to spend that precious time that I have with them um, in the next few years and free up those weekends and things a bit. So never say never, I might go back to the wedding flowers in the future. I will still probably do the odd buttonholes and corsages if people ask for them. Um, I'm going to enjoy doing retail bouquets for local customers and I love doing my stall which I'll keep going. Um, but the most exciting change is that I'm going to grow for florists instead. So that means that instead of me arranging the wedding flowers, I'm going to be able to provide them for my local florists to work their magic and we've got some fantastic local florists. So that is really exciting. They're going to be able to use seasonal locally grown flowers in in their work if they would like to. And so lots of planning because I'm going to have to change how I work. So for the last few years I grow a lot of different varieties in smaller numbers. I'll probably need to use less varieties when I'm growing but try and bulk up a bit. I'm going to have to have more volume so that my florist can get the number of stems that they need. So that's going to be my next learning curve, how to do that. Lots to research over the coming months before next growing season. So I hope you enjoyed today. I'll leave you now with a little clip of the flower stall, which I've just got out again today for the first time after coming back from holidays. And I'll just show you the kind of things that are flowering in the garden right now. And then next week, I am going to have to start my seed sowing again. It's that really important time of year where the kids go back to school next week. That signals to me that I need to start my hardy annuals and perennials off in the greenhouse, get them germinating and growing on. And then I can keep them in the greenhouse over the winter and plant them out in the spring.
for much, much bigger, bushier plants with more flowers come May, June next year. 